Welcome, Thunderbird Nation, to the Thunderbird Coaches Show. I'm your host, John Smith. Uh, joined uh, in the studio today with by head coach of the Thunderbirds, Delane Fitzgerald, and our winning quarterback, Mr. Bronson Barron. Welcome, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Yeah, no, it's it's. I, I was I was telling my wife the other day. It is like ten times better to be the host of the Coaches Show after a win than it is. I get anxiety. Coaches in a bad mood. People are just grumpy after a loss. But I uh, last last win. Um, old uh, Spencer came in and had the honors to uh, to interview after the win. And today I get this one, and just it's a beautiful day. This is your first post victory podcast of, of the year. Of the year. How yeah. about that? I know it's, it's a good day. John, congratulations. Uh, well, <laughs> thank you, Coach, and congratulations to you, sir. Appreciate it. Yep. Um, I'm also a little fired up. So on the way up, uh, up, up the uh, hall here, I got stopped by our, our wonderful, uh, associate or actually deputy athletic director, Marie to She high fived me, told me how great everything was. We're going to talk a little bit about, um, uh, the game coming up this weekend and, and how we can get people out to it. But she told me, um, with a straight face, she told me that I have a face for radio. <laughs> Gosh. Do I just look like like I got a target on my back? What's going so on? So the, the next question is, does the truth hurt? Oh, dude. Oh. That is savage. <laughs> coach not yeah, holding co back. Yeah, Coach <laughs> not holding back today. I guess I asked for it. Um, speaking of not holding back, um, Coach, on a, on a scale from like Arctic glacier to volcanic magma, how great is Baron Bronson, Bronson Baron's mustache? Hey, John, don't with, set him up. With, with the Ron in Burgundy head. in the background. <laughs> yeah, look, it's he's true. just trying to be like, Ron, yeah. like wars have been fought for less action than what is on his face yeah, right now. It is. He just reminds you of some of the uh, 70s film stars. <laughs> oh, no. it, it, rem it reminds me that Kennedy is such a lucky lady to be married to such a virile man. I'm, I'm going to go and the luck is on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No doubt. No doubt. Anyway, guys, uh, impressive, impressive bounce back win. Before we get into uh, the recap, let's just talk a little bit about like, well, a couple things. First, <clears throat> I'm sitting in my basement. Um, the doc says I can't go to the game. I'm on injured reserve. I got the Rona, so I didn't want to get the team sick. So I stayed home. Um, I'm, I'm just like upset anyway, I'm watching, I'm watching the feed and I noticed coach, you've got like a yellow lanyard with a whistle on it and it just dawned on me. What, like, what is he going to blow a whistle in the middle of the game? Like, why, why do you wear the whistle, uh, in, in game? Talk, it's talk to seems, about seems that. to be the question for the month of September. I've gotten that a couple of times. Oh, have you? Even the officials a couple of weeks ago come up and said, <laughs> you, you've got to tuck that away. And I went. No, no, I, I, I don't. Um, I said it's not getting blown, but I don't. Um, that, r real quick one, John, John, in my coaching career, which started in 2000, the, the whistle has changed over the years because they get nasty, they get wet, they get nasty, they just need to be changed. <laughs> okay. And sometimes you'll go to blow one and then it just doesn't blow. It's I've never done. even thought about that. It Thanks gets, for bringing that into my mind. It gets changed. Just a nasty um, old that whistle. lanyard was given to me by Rick Marcella in August of 2000. And that lanyard has been uh, that lanyard has been on my neck for every game that I've ever coached. Wow! Yeah, and I'm not I'm not naive enough to think that it's not ever going to change. Yeah, that, that that it's not going to I'm gonna lose it. It's it's going to get stolen. Whatever, whatever. So, something happens sooner or later, and it's not there. Twenty four years in, it's always been there, and I always put it on. But it it reminds me of of the guy that gave it to me, Coach Marcella, cool. and his work ethic and and his morals and and what he stood for integrity wise and and it, it just does I, oh it, you caught me a little off guard with the question so that that, that lanyard matters to me very cool. um I, i'll wear it until it's not there anymore i do have to laugh because over the years it's broken and it's dry rotted from rain games sure. from the weather games and it's shortened up as <laughs> as it's went on and it's tied a little it's gonna funny be a now. choker at the end of yeah, his career that's what's tight. that's what's gonna happen at the end of it and i'll still have it around my neck but no it reminds me of those guys in new england my first coaching job and their work ethic so yeah well it's hey. great it's great to it's great to every single time you put it on to have that reminder of where you started and those people that were were there pushing you forward to this career No, ab absolutely shout out to rick marcella Very shout cool. out to matt burgess yeah right on um so you're not superstitious but you're just a little stitious. no i don't i don't wear it for, i don't wear it for luck 
You just wear it. I do some other. Reminder. I do some other things for luck. <laughs> Even well, though hey, I, that's for another show. Try to tell people I'm not superstitious, and then I catch myself yeah, doing yeah, really yeah. stupid things because I did it the week before. I get well. You doing stupid things that that all checks right, here out. Here we go. Okay. Um, all right. So let, 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 huge bit bounce back win. Bounce bounce back is a huge statistic. Um, you know, losing a game is not the end of the season. It's not the end of the world. But, you know, you went back-to-back -back losses, and it really shows the character. Before we get into the recap of the actual game, how proud of you are the guys, uh, or are you of the guys for showing that, like, that? In, in my opinion, you can either let it go or you can fight for it. Uh, how, how proud are you? Pro probably guys? more than I can articulate. And, and some things that the, the players didn't know is, is we're, we're back and forth with Austin P and, and Hurricane Helen. Did I say that right? Helene. Uh, Helene. Yeah. Hurricane Helene. And back and forth on how we're going to get there and when we're going to get there. And are, are we getting rerouted to Memphis? Are we getting rerouted to St. To Louis? And then we're going to have to bus in three and a half, four hours. Um, were those things going to happen on Friday? Um, Allegiant tells us that they can land us in Nashville. So, so we get on a plane, but there's still some uncertainties. And, and we go there. And the forecast, John, and I'm setting a scene here, the forecast was that it was going to rain all weekend. It wasn't going to let up until after we finished playing. So we make a decision that we're going to take the guys out and do the walkthrough in the rain on Friday night. And it was cold and it was extremely wet. Um, really proud of the way the young men handled it. Um, John, we had a good week of practice last week. And our guys tried each day to improve themselves from the day before, which, which is what good teams do. And we did that all week, and then they handled their business that way on Friday night. Really excited group to play football on Friday night. We wake up on Saturday, and again, we've traveled across country on, on an airplane. We've slept in a hotel, which is never great. We wake up on Saturday, and our guys were really enthusiastic, and then the weather cleared up a lot for us. Yeah, man. Um, I don't know. Maybe the, the weather gods are T-Birds fans. So, yeah. well, I guess, I, is a Thunderbird like the god of some kind of weather? I mean, I, it's I it's, a, it's a myth, it's a it's a Native American yeah. mythical creature. Uh, I gotta I, I'm gonna do some more research. We're the um, only Thunderbirds in NCAA. Thunderbird athletics. Nation. I'll get back to you on on, on <laughs> some more Thunderbird facts uh, in later shows. Thank here. God for Wikipedia. Yeah, Wikipedia exactly. <laughs> John, to answer your question in in, in one sentence, um, I, I'm extremely proud of this group last week, and our coaching staff's happy to be associated with these young men. That's awesome. Let's get into uh, the recap. Recap is. Brought to you by Retro Fitness. Uh, take care of your body. Join Retro Fitness. Go over there. Use their uh, use their equipment. Um, join the class. Uh, just everything you need over there to be your best. So, uh, Retro Fitness. Appreciate the sponsorship of the show. Uh, huge bounce back week. Let's talk a little bit about. Um, we knew there were some challenges. You, you've gone over that. Um, there's challenges on roster. There's always people hurt and who's available and all that. But but. Let's get to the game itself. Um, first half, give us a little recap of, of the game and kind of from your both both of your perspectives. Your first start as yep. a T-Bird. Yeah. Correct. Awesome. Yeah. One, one and oh. It came out and we, we were able to put a drive <clears throat> together and score first and end up seven to nothing. We've got to do a better job on the defensive side of the ball to answering the offensive scores because when we score, our defense seems to let down and give up a score. Um, but we were seven seven. Um, John had an opportunity late in the first half to score another one, and, and Austin P put together a goal line stand on us. You know, I've, I've caught some flack for going for it on fourth and one from the one foot line. Um, I'm not kicking a field goal to, uh, on, on fourth and one on the goal line. I'm not doing it, and we're not doing it next time either for those that thought it was a bad idea. Um, we're, we're going to play hard, tough nose, blue-collar football, and kicking a field goal at that point is not doing those things. Uh, Neil Smith, that answers your question. <laughs> and so, so there's a question coming from Neil. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, Neil I, hit I, me up this morning. He's like, hey, you got to ask him. I love, love well, Neil. We have, we have first and goal on the four-yard line. Yes. Yeah, yeah I got well, how about four targi runs? One, two, three, four. Let's yeah. do that. <laughs> it's been discussed in the staff meetings. <laughs> I bet it has. It's four, four run plays. Four run plays has been discussed in the staff meeting. But we went into halftime seven seven. Uh, felt good about ourselves. Thought we had played hard. Thought our minds and bodies were in the right spot at halftime. And our rallying edge, it's real simple. And our offense and defensive coordinators, special team coordinators are making adjustments at halftime. But but our theme at halftime is is if we if we out it's dead even. 
you're in tie ball game. If we outplay them for the next hour and a half, we're going to leave here successful. We're going to celebrate in the locker room. We're going to celebrate on the plane on the way home. Um, and, and that was the theme. And, John, we did. We came out in the second half and completely outplayed them in the second half. And I know it was tight at the end. It's 21-17. Um, we get a pick six. Jaden Robertson gets a pick six and goes in, makes it look a little more lopsided than the yeah. game was. Yeah. Um, we were going to win either way. But, but glad that he sealed the deal a little earlier than, than it had to be. It's nice to have an exclamation point at the end of the sentence. Agree. Okay. Yeah. I completely agree. There's nothing wrong with uh, that. John, people look at the statistics, and, and we're, the turnovers are similar, and the, the yards, they rushed for more yards Ooh. than we did, but we threw for a lot more yards than they did, so the total yards are evened out. And, and, and this is where the layman, uh, you know, the, the armchair quarterback doesn't understand. Um, we had 50 yards in penalties, and they had over 100 yards in penalties. Huge difference. Um, that, they end up with 13, 14 penalties because we d- we declined two or three. That's right. On paper, it's 11 penalties for 90-some yards versus our 50 yards. And then we had 63 yards in interception returns. And they had no yards in interception returns. So those things, when you add those together, that that's where the difference in the score is because we're plus 100 yards in those two. In those two factors. <clears throat> and we did, we did win the turnover battle. Shows you the importance also of the little things, right? Yeah. Those those little things that may not show up to the, the layman, like you said, or the armchair quarterback at home. There's a lot of those tiny little things that have to be uh, – you have to have that attention to detail because they will make a difference in a tight when game. When two teams are even talent-wise like we were and yeah. even statistically like we were, those little yards, those little hidden yards make a big difference. So let's talk a little bit about the physicality of the game. I, I thought you guys were both getting after each other pretty good. Um, I was talking to, to Bronson before the, uh, before the uh, <clears throat> show here, and, uh, man, I mean, they, they, were, they were physical. We were physical. Uh, I liked the battle, Coach. It was, it was pretty even, like you said. But those those small things came out. But let's talk about our physicality. What was the message to the guys? Yeah, and the me- the message to our team is we were going to win up front. Okay. It, 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 the game was going to be won or lost on the offensive and defensive line. Well, when you say offensive defensive line, you're also talking to the tight ends on offense, and you're sure. talking to the linebackers on defense because it's really the front seven on each side. But we knew we didn't have a lot of conversations last week mm-hmm. uh, about physicality. The the <laughs> conversation was is that we just win the day. Yeah. Let, let's win each day last week and then win on Saturday. Uh, John, our kids aren't going to back down f- f- to a physical battle. Hey, we're, we're not going to back down. Y'all are up for it. Love to hear it. Um, Bronson, first start yeah. in how many years? Two. <laughs> two years. Two full years. Yeah. Right? And before that, how many starts? I don't know. Coach asked me that question. 22? Yeah. Probably no. 25. 25? range, yeah. Probably. Yeah. 120 games. 121 games. He's 121 yeah. or 22 FCS games. So yeah. it's probably, actually probably closer to 30 starts, yeah. Yeah. So, so – it's kind of got to be weird for you. What were your yeah. feelings going into when, when they said, all right, the ball's yours? Um, give us a little bit of background, what it's like to, to have that little break. Yeah. Uh, you're kind of used to being the guy. Yeah. And then uh, we'll talk a little bit about patience and perseverance. Too. Yeah. You know, I mean, even though it did come a little bit later than expected, you know, I was just treating everything as if I were the guy. You know, coach was always in my ear, hey, be ready, be ready. You never know what's going to be. So I treated every week as if I was the starter, and whenever the opportunity was going to come, I was going to be ready, and I was going to take it and run with it. So um, it was a little bit different uh, after two years of not starting, but getting back behind those guys up front and being behind center, it, it felt normal. It yeah. felt like it was where I was meant to be, and it was exciting, man. It I, felt I, like home. Yeah, it was right, and that's how it felt. Very <laughs> cool, very cool. Um because you've had that long layoff, because there's there is a learning curve to live action and and being the starter, um, we we had talked about perseverance and and some patience and oh. honestly some frustration, mm-hmm. um, just period in in life. What's that life lesson taught you? Man, I just say kind of what I said earlier. You you never know when your time's gonna come. You never know when the opportunity is gonna be presented. So you need to make sure you're ready. You yeah. know. Uh, we always talk about whenever someone goes down, you have to be able to pick up the rifle and go. Yeah. And that was just the mindset the whole time. That's a cool you know, lesson. As long as you're ready and you do your part, man, like what a shame it would be if your opportunity is presented and you don't rise up to that occasion. You know, that was something that was, was big for me is 
making sure I was ready um, for when the opportunity came and, and not letting those people who have spent so much time with me, not letting them down. You yeah. know, they're those guys who you grind with in the weight room all off season. You're out there during fall camp with spring ball. Like, you know, they, they've they gone, put in so much time and effort. The coaches put in a lot of time and effort into us as well. Um, my wife, you know, I, I kind of dragged her around the country the past two years. And so, you know, making sure that I'm doing my job because everyone else is doing their job. That's so. a great answer, man. Appreciate that. John, y'all y'all brought it up in conversation. Yeah. I think it needs to be it needs to be noted. The the patience and perseverance and frustration working through those things, those are the lessons that are so great in this game. Because it doesn't matter whether you're the quarterback or the nose guard or the safety or the tight end, you're, you're going to feel all three of those, not only through your career, you're going to feel them in a season. And if you handle them the right way, like Bronson's handled them the right way, you come out of it the other side a whole lot better person. Yeah. Well, and, and like he said, um, it would be a shame if he didn't do what he could do when his time isn't called uh, and let his guys down. That's, most, most, that's awesome. Most everybody's opportunity in and, and sports and in life, <clears throat> most everybody's opportunity presents itself at some point in time. Yeah. John, less, less than 50% of them are ready when the opportunity presents itself. Yeah, and and I think, it's not like you said, it's not just quarterback. I mean, Jeremy Perkins played, popped in for center oh, and in and out. I mean, and, and there's other positions. I'm not, you know, obviously we're not going to say every single one, but yeah. the reality is uh, it's, it's a great um, – it's a great tribute to the coaches. Remember, and it's a great tribute to the players that they're I, ready I, to go. And I, I go a different way. It's, it's a tribute to the way they were raised. It, it's a tribute. Oh, mom to and dad. Shout mom out. and dad, brothers and sisters, aunts, uncles. Yeah, it's, it's hey, not second cousins, <laughs> but but it's a tribute to all. It's a tribute to all the rest of them. Um, yeah, and you, you brought hey, Bron- Bronson's handled himself like a grown man. Yeah. the whole time he's been here, but but he ain't in. He's not in the Jeremy Perkins category now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jer- Jer- hey, Jeremy Perkins on a whole nother Next level. level. Yeah, a whole nother level. Hey, you, but Jeremy can't grow a stash like that. Baby. You can't. You you can't tell whether Jeremy's starting, Jeremy's coming off the bench, or Jeremy mm-hmm. has no chance to play. His attitude, personality, and the way he approaches football and life are always the same. same. Um, love yeah. that kid. Yeah, I I like being around Bronson, but I love being around Jeremy now. <laughs> hey, honest truth here on the coaches show. Um. All right. Anything else you want to add? I know there's a little uh, a little um, celebrity sighting at the uh, at the Mr. At, October at the FBO, right? Mr. Yeah. October. Um, they, they, oh, got, got to tell. The, I'll tell the story, and I'll quick, take. Quick, yeah. I'll take all the creative words. We we have. Um, Oh, we, we have screening. We had a screening problem yeah. on the way back here that delayed us for about an hour and 45 minutes, something we're working to correct in the future because we should have got back home a little bit earlier. Mm-hmm. But in the screening, they make us go to another terminal. And, and we go to the terminal, and, and this, this older gentleman, this old I'm, – I'm, I'm sitting in the seat, and I'm watching Alabama's first quarter route of Georgia. Oh, yeah. And I'm sitting there, and, I, and I'm befuddled at why Georgia's playing so poorly to start the game. And, and this guy over my shoulder, and he goes, Hey – there's a guy in a bathroom big as a redwood tree. Where'd you find him? And I said, sir, I think you're talking about Coach White, our O-line coach, Matt White. He's <laughs> a large human being. I, yeah, I, I, said, I said, I think you're talking about Coach White. And he goes, where'd he play? And I said, well, he's two, three-year starter at NC State. He goes, did he play in the NFL? I said, I don't think so. I think he went right into coaching after college. He goes, man, oh, man. He said, if I'd have been that big. And, and I'm sitting there, and I'm like, yeah. I, and it, it, it got a hey, very, very charismatic, very, very outgoing gentleman. And I'm standing there talking to him. I have no idea who I'm speaking with, John. None. I have no clue who I'm talking with. And I said, why don't you wait until he comes out of the bathroom and look up at him and tell him if you'd have been as big as him, you'd have been somebody. He and he looks at the guy. Looks at me and goes, oh, I was somebody. I was Reggie Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> And T- Taylor Spencer, our athletic trainer, goes, no way. You're Reggie Jackson. And I turned and looked, and I went, that's Reggie Jackson. <laughs> wow. So I got up out of my chair. I, I was I, I was paying. I, I, I wasn't being disrespectful. I just th- thought it was some guy just giving me up the river for no reason. And sure. I turned around. And I said, hey, you mind if I take a picture? He said, yeah, you can take a picture. So I managed to get a picture with him. Cool. And he was phenomenal. Reggie's the man. He was phenomenal. Word, word on the street is, is that he has business interest in Nashville and does okay. pretty well. Yeah. Was Yeah. I know. He, he went out of the door and got on his own private jet, if that tells you anything. I've been in one of his houses. Yeah. He does all right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's, he's pretty incredible. Good for him. Yeah. 
<clears throat> well, yeah, and and it look, was a, it, it was it was an honor. Um, it, it was really really neat to meet the gentleman. Yeah, very very cool guy. Um, coach, anything else you want to talk about? Uh, uh, usually by now you've told me to move on at least three times. Um, you want to move on to the the student spotlight? We get we could we put Austin P behind us and move forward. Oh, Saturday was fun. We could, yeah, we could talk hey, about hey, those. If you ones want to sit and talk about Austin want. P for a little while <laughs> for longer, thirty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, John. We as a, as a football team, we put it to, we put it to bed at three p.m. yesterday in, in our team meeting. Um, yeah, for everybody out there, when you beat the defending conference champions, that's right. When you beat the defending conference champions in bad weather and after a bad flight at their place, mm-hmm. yeah, it, it, it's a big deal and and good for the young men in our program and good for our coaching staff. Yeah, and there's a lot of turning points in a season. This is definitely one of those that you'll look back on and say, wow, that was there was some adversity we overcame, yeah. and we did our thing. Um, thanks, Coach. <clears throat> um, next segment is the Visit Cedar City Brian Head Student Spotlight. Our student spotlight today is Bronson Barron, my man. Let's open, let's open the segment here real quick with five questions. We're going to get right. to know you a little better. Let's do it. All right. Uh, if you could go to any concert, who would you want to go watch? Man, I bet a lot of people, the younger people listening to this, probably won't even know who this is, but it'd probably be James Taylor. Oh, what's up? JT. JT. Yeah. yeah. Is JT still alive? I think so. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah he's, he's still going. He did a concert recently. With Carol King. And, in, in Salt Lake. Yeah, yeah. no, he's, he's the man. So my, my defensive coordinator in college, Dick Hopkins. Dick Hopkins used to sit and listen to JT all the time. Yeah. And, and that was great because we'd listen to JT with him, but then I had to listen to him sing it when JT wasn't on. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but no, it, it, yeah, James Taylor. James yeah. Taylor's the man. JT, probably. That's a solid answer, especially yeah. with that mustache. He's a 70s, 80s guy. <laughs> um, number two, uh, what's your favorite food? What do you like to eat? Uh, you know, I'm pretty pretty open to anything. Um, but I'd probably say a good steak, steak and potatoes. I feel like you can't go wrong with that. You can't go wrong at all. Yeah. Uh, full-blooded American there. Um, favorite show slash movie? You could TV series or movie, and why Man. do you like it? Um, you know, not big into TV. I'm not gonna lie, uh, not a lot of time to do so, sure. especially during the season. Smart um, answer with coach sitting there. But it's honestly kind of whatever Kennedy is watching at the time, whatever. <laughs> Whatever Kennedy has on, I'm not. Are really, you a political hey, science you're, 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 major? You could run. No, for I'm just. Hey, 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 I'm just being smart, hey, coach. And, you know how it my, is, my, John. You know how it is. You I gotta do. be smart. No, I do. Know. My dislike for for Bronson's getting ready to start because the next thing is is what's your favorite TV channel? He's gonna say the Hallmark. Channel. No, no, no. <laughs> Luckily, Kennedy <laughs> Kennedy's Hallmark not a Hallmark movies. gal. So we, I've learned to love anything go. my wife watches on. Yeah, TV. Yeah, whatever, just whatever. That way, easier that way. Whatever Kennedy has on. Oh, that's good. Um, and you got to be smart. I don't want to mess with her, yeah, her sure. mojo. Well, smart. You know, number four, if, if mom ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I got you. Number four, any nicknames of consequence, anything that, uh, that you've had growing up or, or on the field, you know, just bronze. That's really the main one. Bronze. Just bronze okay. kind of would have gone by my whole life. Uh, some guys on the teams I've played with, they call me brawny. LeBronson. LeBronson. Yeah, Crew okay. Erickson thinks that one's pretty funny. LeBronson. LeBronson. But uh you know, mainly Bronx. That's that's the main one. Okay. Um and then uh, last question, a little more serious. Um what have you been studying? You've had a, a, a do you have a degree yet? Are you postgraduate? Where are you at in your in your school and uh, why did you pick that uh, line of study? Um you know, I'm uh, just a general studies major sure. uh, with a minor in history. Coach is laughing right now because of the conversation we had yesterday. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I – with transferring the two times, it kind of messes with credits and, sure. and that aspect of things. So And you're only a junior. Yeah. So that kind of uh, changed the course of my studies. Mm-hmm. Um, but went with general studies. Um, general yeah. education, smart yeah, move. Kind of figuring out. Still you can get out. you can get a general studies degree here and do a whole bunch of things with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you can come out of here with a general studies degree and what's your GPA now? Three five. Yeah, in that yeah. range. You, you Solid. Can, yeah, yeah, you can go to law school and you can go to dental. Sure. You can do a lot of things with it's, it. It's a good platform to to, uh, to base off of. And then um, let's see, you've had a crazy journey. Um, as far as time goes, we'll get into it another day mm-hmm. as far as your journey to, yeah. to come here. But uh, one thing I do want to ask you is what what lesson, what's your what's the thing that either a coach or the game of football has taught you? 
Man. Uh, football, there's so much, right? I feel like sports in general, but football especially is a great avenue to learning and growth. Uh, you know, I think we, we talked a lot about earlier about like patience and perseverance. Yeah. I think that's a, a big one okay. in football is just being able to fully, you know, realize kind of what we want. Our timing isn't always the right timing. You know, there there's a, a time and a place for certain things. Sure. I'd also say just the being able to deal with adversity. Um, you know, we talked about it going Friday. We didn't know how things were going to be. Travel we're, wise. Travel wise, you know, we're we're playing. Coach has us do wet ball drill all week, right? As a Smart. quarterback, it's not really the funnest thing when coach is dumping the ball in a big old cooler of water and it, mm-hmm. it's soaking wet. But you know, there's so much to learn and dealing with the adversity. That's a, a big thing in, in sports and football, especially. You know, cool. there's up and downs, and it's all about how you respond. You know, I think this year so far we we have seen that adversity um, going those two straight losses, but you know we bounce back and now we're on the a trending upward slope. So that's yeah. a, that's a big thing is being able to bounce back and love it. Move on. Awesome, um, <clears throat> coach. Let's get into uh, this week's game. Sure. Um, the uh, the preview here is going to be sponsored by Warehouse Bar Plus Kitchen. Um, go down and get some tasty some tasty food down at the Warehouse Bar Plus Kitchen. Get you a nice cold beverage and uh and relax at the warehouse bar plus kitchen um it's one of my favorite games last year was on the road against tarleton tarleton states the opponent uh coming up this week um that was a that was a wild and crazy atmosphere wild and crazy game uh what can we expect um from the texans coming into cedar city uh, this Saturday, yeah, John, same players, and and the the in, in my mind, the three top teams in our conference are, are the three teams that participate the least in the portal, which, which is us and Tarleton and, and Central Arkansas. Um, but they return a lot of the same players from last year, um, almost the exact same offense. Like seven out of the eleven starters on defense are the same. But let, let's go back to your question: explosive on offense that they're an RPO offense and, and they're reading a lot of things, but explosive on offense. Um, Gabalas does a nice job at the quarterback position uh, of, of distributing the ball and making the reads and, and seeing his keys and making the reads that need to be made. Um, I haven't followed him. I know he got hurt in that first game. Is he is he back in action? He's is he back. their guy? Okay. He's back and as good as he ever was. Yeah. Um, Brit Britain is the tailback and, and number Oof. four. He's leading the country in rushing. He can go. He's leading the country in rushing, and and it'll be a task to try to contain. You're not going to stop him. Uh, to try to hold him to less than what he's been getting. It'll be, it'll be our you know our charge. Sure. And, and then Darius Cooper at the wide receiver position is electric for them and and on a different level. And John, in, in my opinion, uh, NFL wide receiver. Um, is the way I see him, wow. and then they have they have three receivers along with him that that are the real deal. And number seven and number ten and number five are all real deal players. They returned their whole offensive line from last year, so they're all back. They they flip over on defense, and like I said, seven out of the eleven d- defensive players are back. Wow, they're good at every level: first level, second level, third level. They're good at every level. They're really, really well coached. Um, uh, Tyrone Nix is the defensive coordinator, and Tyrone Nix was really good in the 90s and early 2000s at South Carolina and Old Miss and Southern Miss, but he's been a defensive coordinator all around um, UTSA and done a nice job everywhere he's been, but he does a nice job coaching that defense. And then, J- John, they, they have some of the better special teams players in the conference. What do they play defensively? So they're, 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 uh, so they're like everybody else. They're multiple. Okay, I'm gonna but stop it, asking that question because yeah, everyone's just multiple. That, that different. That, yeah, yeah the, 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 change the looks constantly. The, the, they're multiple, but they, <clears throat> if you ask them, they're gonna tell you they're a four man front. Okay. Yep. Um, man, so we've seen Gabalas before. He was also at University of. What's he was he, he was Utah at the school, he was at the school down south from <laughs> us, and he he, ch- he chased that Texas money, and yeah. it's, it's worked out well for him. Yeah, so so we we have a little tape on him. Obviously, um, we're able to to match up against uh, them. Uh, keys to the game, obviously. I mean, this is the the most obvious question. But what are you looking? Um, what are you looking to do in a general sense? Is is it stop the run? Is it? I mean, what are the things we got to do to win? Yeah, when, win when, one more point. When you're good, when you're good up front like they are, and it start everything starts up front. Okay. When you're good up front like they are, 
you're going to have to stop both. You're good up front. You got a good quarterback. You're going to have to start stop both. Get, get pressure. Yep. Yeah, you're going to have to stop the run game. You're going to have to stop their pass game. Um, you, you've got to get some indecision and into and the quarterback with with the different coverages and, and fronts that you're showing him. Um, and Bronson understands that as well as anybody else. Sure. But you, you've got to get those things. Um, John, it's a, it'd be a tough football game. Yeah, and it's 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 a big game. Obviously, we're at home. Yeah. Um, I think this is this is something that that um, the administration, the coaching staff, the players. We all, and, and myself, we all need the community and the students to show up for no this. Doubt. We have to have uh, a home field advantage. Um, I mean, this is, this yeah, is S- a huge S- game. S- SUU, Cedar City, Iron County, come out. Come on out. Yeah, Saturday night, 6 p.m. Thunderbird Nation, we need you this Saturday. Uh, we've got the 435 deal going. Four tickets, 35 bucks. That's the area code, 435 deal. Four tickets, thirty-five bucks. Come out this Saturday. Uh, record conference. Watch it later. Um, come and come and check out the T-Birds live. Uh, get loud. Get rowdy. They absolutely need you uh, for our for our home field advantage. And and I'll tell you what. Last time we were down in Tarleton, man, they were in our ear. They got something called the Plow Boys, and they were they were a ruckus. They were crazy. Uh, we have got to get them back. We got to let them know who we are and what we do. So the th- what do we call them? The 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 thunderstorm. What's the what's the student yeah. section now? Sure, th- you say so. Yeah, yeah thunderstorm. Uh, thorn- I think it's the thunderstorm. Um, it, it's a newly branded thing. I'll get used to it. But the the, yeah. the guys in the pink chap stood. Out, it, it stood out in your mind last oh, year. Oh man, I don't even want yeah. to talk about it. It was so annoying. Yeah, stand, stand, standing behind <laughs> us. Yeah, uh, and talk, the, talking about my with the parents, axe handles talking about my parents and my grandparents your, your and parentage. Yeah, yeah. How yeah, about that? Yeah, it was wild, <laughs> classy. Yeah, we hey, we need to get we need to get it back at them. You, you still remember that? I have. I forgotten. remember the whole thing, man. I had forgotten. I had to listen to it right behind him anyway. Tom's taking receipts. I'm taking receipts. That's yeah. exactly right. So uh, Cedar City, uh, SUU, Thunderbird Nation. Uh, we've got a game at six o'clock this Saturday. We got to get after it. Um, Awesome home uh, field advantage when you show up and number, get loud. Number 16, 17 team in the country. That's they're, right. They're somewhere in there. Yep. But a top 20 team in the country coming to Cedar. Hey, and, and look, the reality is, yeah, we got a couple losses on the schedule, but the but the reality is we start winning in from here and we get that uh, UAC title. Uh, we're, we're playoff bound. So each one, now I love football. We talked about it before. There's only 12 games this year. Each one is super important. Uh, got to come out. Got to got to get the tickets. Whatever it is, if you need some help with that, holler at me. Uh, but just go go get the tickets. Go to the game. Get rowdy. Get excited for your T Birds. We're on the we're on the up. We we're back, baby. Yes. Okay. We don't ever leave here without shout outs. All right. Let's 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 so, get our shout outs on. Bronson, go ahead. First shout out. Got to go to my wife. Hey. Uh, celebrating our two year anniversary today. Actually, oh, happy anniversary, my yeah. man. Yep. Two years today, Kennedy. You're amazing. And then it's got to go. Man, to the 10 other guys on the offense, those guys are the ones that make it happen. I'm just grateful to be able to distribute the ball to them. Appreciate the guys up front for yep. making it all work. Like yep. Coach said, you went in the trenches. and Take Gabe to lunch, those too. Guys, yeah. He had a game. Gabe did have a game. Yeah. Pass protection was pretty good, though. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying. He'd have some choices on that lunch thing. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, he, they, that's got to be smart. He dropped gotta be smart. Some, yeah, yeah. Drop some of that NIL on your boys. No doubt. Yeah, hey, hey, to my family that was able to make it down, uh, the family and the late crew that was able to make it down to Nashville and Clarksville for the weekend, um, big shout-out to you guys, uh, my mom and stepfather. It was great seeing you guys. Love you guys. Um, uh, J.R. McHenry was with us this, week, this weekend. The Boss Man podcast out of Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, I love the Boss Man. Uh, uh, boss Man's – phenomenal but he he was with us this weekend gave the uh pregame when he's there great uh, gay we're undefeated when a lot of people were there but he gave the pregame speech uh on on friday night and did a great job but i'm glad he was there and thankful for that that's awesome yeah um look on that on that note i got nothing well i guess i shout out my wife hi shannon i know i got you sick i'm Your sorry mom. that's my bad Your mom oh diane is the best you know she every 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 month she donates to the collective do you know that? I did not know that. Every single month, she yeah. she donates uh, at Thor'sHammer.co. Shameless plug. Um, sure. Yeah, she's awesome. She she donates to the collective. She's at every game. She's got season tickets. Uh, she's on her own now. Dad passed away, and she looks forward to Thunderbird football. Okay. So love love mom. Thanks, Diane. Um, those are my shout outs. Uh, we got to wrap this up. We're a little over time, but um, look, 
excited for this weekend. Again, Thunderbird Nation, show up. We need you. For Bronson Barron, Coach Lane Fitzgerald, I'm John Smith signing off. Go T-Birds. Go Thunderbirds. Go